find amazing about virtual reality is all the little things that we get added into virtual spaces that are really not necessary for the overall purpose of the game but are just really interesting little things that are added in to help fill out and make an environment feel just that much more immersive. One great example of this is Half-Life Alex. Right off at the beginning, you are spawned on a rooftop. And on this rooftop, you are sat next to a window. And if you go inside and you look through this window, you can see all the things that Alex was documenting and keeping notes on while she was up there on that rooftop. And if you look just a little bit more closely, you'll actually find that there's a marker set next to that window. And if you pick it up, press it against the window, just as you would expect in real life, you're able to draw around on the window yourself and have your own little doodles, erase them, and so on and so forth. Now this marker is actually not really anything special when you're compared to real life. It's something you may have actually done before, drawing on a window with a marker. And it is in no way necessary to be able to complete or even get through Half-Life Alex. It's not even any sort of main mechanic. It was just a really interesting little feature that was added in. So in this video, I wanted to show you another example of that. I wanna show you how we can draw around on just a regular surface so that way we're able to do whatever it is that we would like in our virtual space, whether it be drawing on a whiteboard, drawing on a map, maybe make out game plans while preparing for battle on our next mission. There's a lot of options for being able to draw on surfaces. So before we jump to that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like the subscribe button down below and let's jump right in the video. So this is our little drawing surface here. Um, you can see this is actually just a very simple plane. You can see if I go around behind it, there's just nothing there behind it. it it's a very simple, just standard plane. Um, but this is our drawing surface that we're able to draw on. <laughs> um, can't really get much more uh, self-explanatory than that, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so this is where we can draw. So I only have it configured for my right hand. So if I point with my right hand, I can draw around on the surface. So I could do like a, a circle. Let me see if I can get a little smiley face going in there. There we go. So we got ourselves a little smiley face. I could do, for example, a little star for example or we could do like a cube not they're they're not perfect symbols but you you kind of get the idea of what what we can do with this so th this is just a very simple straightforward way to be able to draw on surfaces just like this now there's a lot of different there's a lot of different things that you can do uh to this kind of material um, you could, for example, have different colors. For example, if you want to have different, uh, you know, like markers or something along the ground, I definitely per suggest having some way for players to be able to interact up close. You kind of start going further away and you kind of start getting these little spot, like a little spotty effect. Um, it, of course, you can fix this by changing up the size of the uh, of the marker or whatever it is that, that you decide to use for something like this. Um, there's a lot of different potential for this. You could even have like images or stamps that are just like put onto the uh, onto the surface. If you had like a full on smiley face rather than having to draw it out, you could have just like a smiley face stamp that goes right there. So there's a lot of very interesting things that you can do with this. Um, now, I don't know if this is great as like a core mechanic to any game, um, although I, I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, but this is definitely really interesting just to be able to play around with while exploring an environment, like uh, for example, in Half-Life Alex, or if you're big on Onward, um, this is also something pretty sim similar where we can draw around and kind of strategize before actually jumping into a game or just kind of playing around with uh, with other friends or players or whatever have you, you know, just start getting like a tic-tac-toe game or something like that. So there's a lot of fun that, that can be had with something like this. Um, so let me go and jump into the video and I can show you exactly how this is all put together. Now, before we're able to draw on any surfaces, first off, we need to enable one project setting. If we go into the project settings in our Unreal Engine project and look up UV, we'll find this option that says support UV from hit results. 
We need to make sure that this is checked because this is absolutely necessary in order for this to work. Now hitting this checkbox will also prompt a restart from Unreal Engine, so go ahead and hit that restart. And like I said, this checkbox is necessary. This whole process may not end up working well for you if it ends up working at all. So make sure that you have that checkbox checked before you move on to the rest of this tutorial. Once you have Unreal Engine restarted and you're back in the project, now let's go ahead and start by actually putting together our drawing surface. So to do this, we're first going to need two materials. These are both going to be pretty easy to set up. First, I'm going to create a folder called materials. And in this, the first material I'm going to create is going to be called drawing surface. This is going to be a very simple material that's actually going to act as the surface that we're drawing on. Now this material does not require very much. All we need to do is drag off of the emissive color and we need to make sure that we give this a texture parameter to D. Now, if you want to set this texture sample parameter to anything at all, you're more than welcome to. However, it's not going to be necessary as once we actually put together our blueprint, we're actually going to be ending up overriding this texture sample parameter. So just go ahead and give this a name. And you also want to make sure that you remember exactly what you call this texture sample parameter to D. I'm calling this just texture. So that way it's easy to remember. And I'll remember this later on when we get to the blueprints. Once you have this material set, we are also going to need a second material. This second material is what's actually going to be used to draw onto the surface. So this can look whatever you want it to look like. Now for this example, I'm just going to give this another emissive color and I'm just going to give this a solid red color. Now I'm using a vector for parameter. However, it really doesn't matter what the name of this parameter is and it really doesn't matter exactly what the color is. This is entirely up to you since this is what's going to actually be used to draw onto the surface. If you would like it, if you have an actual image you would like to use, you're also more than welcome to use that as well. Once you have both these materials set up, now we're ready to create the drawing surface blueprint that we're actually going to be able to draw on. So to do this, I'm going to create one more folder called blueprint. I'm going to give this a new actor called drawing surface. Now, right off the bat in the viewport, there's not a lot that needs to happen here. The only thing that we need to have in this actual actor is we're going to need a plane. Now, if you'd like, you can also take this opportunity to scale this plane. You can also take this opportunity to rotate around just like I'm doing here. Or if you'd like, you can also just leave this plane as the root component and just rotate it once you actually have it in the level. I am just going to rotate it here so that way it's a little bit easier when I actually get into the level and I don't have to do as much work. Then I'm also going to go ahead and give this plane that first material we made, that drawing material. So that way we're actually able to draw on this surface. Once we have our component set, next we need to jump into the construction script. Here in the construction script, first off, I'm going to make a sequence and this is going to have three output execution nodes. So that way we can split this up a little bit better. Then for the first execution on our sequence, we're going to create a render target 2D and set this to a variable that we can store within the blueprint. Now this render target needs to be saved as a variable because this render target is going to be required to actually be able to draw on our surfaces in a minute. So make sure that you do in fact have this saved as a variable for later. In addition, if you would like to modify the width height as well as the clear color for the render target 2D, you're also more than welcome to do that in this moment as well. The clear color is going to serve as our default background color before anything actually gets drawn onto the surface. So in this case, I'm going to go for a solid white so that way everything appears very clearly on it. Once this is done, we're next going to go on to our next execution. And in here, we're going to create a dynamic material instance. Now, if you set the plain material to the material that we're using, you can go ahead and get the material just like I'm doing here. However, if you chose not to set the material of that plane, you can also just go ahead and get the material and pass it into the parent here instead. Then once you've created this dynamic material instance, we then need to take the return value from this and we need to set a texture parameter value. 
The parameter name is going to be the name of that texture parameter that we created in the material. If you'll recall, I told you to make sure that this was something you'd remember. In this case, I named it texture. So that's exactly what I'm going to put in for the parameter name here. And the value is going to be the render target variable that we set up in our previous sequence. Once this is all done, we're also going to take this dynamic material instance and we're also going to set this as the planes material. This is going to override that material that we created and this is going to allow for us to be able to edit that material and see those changes that we make on the plane itself. Finally, we need to create one more dynamic material instance and this is going to be on the last sequence. This material instance is going to be what's going to be used to draw on our actual surface. So I'm going to take the brush material and that's going to be dropped in to the parent on the, this material instance. And then I'm also going to make sure that this is stored later for later on as well. Once we finished up with the construction script, next we need to create a function that will allow for us to draw on our surface. To do this, I'm going to create a new function called draw. And in this function, I'm going to add in two inputs. The first one is going to be called size, and this is going to have a float. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but all this is going to do is it's going to allow for us to control how big the brush is when we are drawing on our surface. The second variable is going to be called location, and this is going to be a vector 2D. Now this is going to be used to actually determine where we're drawing on our render target. Now we're going to worry about this in a second, so just make sure that you have this vector 2D stored for when we get to drawing. Once we have our function set up, now let's go ahead and get to drawing. To do this, I'm going to go and get that render target variable. And using that, I'm going to begin draw canvas to render target. Now, once we've begun drawing on the render target, we're going to need to take the canvas and we need to call draw material. Now the canvas should go in as the target for this draw material and the, draw br the drawing brush that we created in the construction script is going to be dropped in as our render material. Once we have that render material filled in, we also need to fill in the screen position and our screen size values. Now these are all pretty simple, so let me go and walk you right through these. We'll start off with this screen position. For the screen position, we're going to get the size from our begin draw canvas to render target. We're going to multiply that by the location value that we got from the input of our function. Then we're going to take the output of this value and we're going to subtract by size divided by two. Now we can't actually drop a float directly in and compare it with a vector 2D as you may hope that we can do. So the way that I found works best for this is we go ahead and split that vector 2D and then we drop in that size divided by two value as both the X and Y values for our screen position. Once you've dropped those in, we can go ahead and take this final value and drop it in for our screen position. The screen size X and Y are also both pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take that size and we're again going to split that screen size into an X and Y value. And we're going to pass that size in as both the X and Y values. Once this is all done, we are now drawing on the surface. So now all we need to do is finish drawing. To do this, I'm going to get the context from that begin draw canvas to render target. And at the very end, I'm going to call end draw canvas to render target. Once we have this actor created, we are now all done with that. We now have something that we're able to draw on. So we can go ahead and drop that into the level. However, there's one more step that we need to do in order to actually be able to draw. And that's to actually call that draw function that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the VR pause that way we can call that function. Now in the VR pond, we're going to need a couple of things. First, I'm going to go ahead and steal this input action trigger, right? Now, in this case, I'm actually using this since it's a default fee, uh, addition to the VR pond. So I'm just going to go and steal this. I'm going to bring it down with me. Then I'm also going to grab the event tick. And we're going to be using both of these to be able to draw on the surface here. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and grab our event tick. I'm going to feed this into a gate. Then using our trigger right, we're going to open on pressed and we're going to close this gate on released. This is going to allow for us to control when we start drawing as well as when we stop drawing. Once we have this gate set up, next thing we need to do is we need to line trace by channel. 
So in order to line trace by channel, we're going to get that motion controller right, since we're using the trigger right, this seems very fitting. And then using this motion controller right, I'm going to get the world location, which is going to go in as our start value. Then our end value is going to use the forward vector from our motion controller right. We'll multiply that by whatever value you would like. In this case, I'm going to multiply it by 10,000. And then I'm going to add that to the world location from our motion controller right in order to get that end value. Now, one more important step as well for this line trace by channel, we also need to make sure that the trace complex is set to true so that way we're able to actually detect when and where we're drawing on that surface. So make sure that that is set to true. Once we've line traced by channel, the last step is to actually call that drawing function. So to do this, I'm going to get the out hit from our line trace by channel. And using this out hit, I'm going to break it, get our hit actor, and I'm going to cast that to the drawing surface that we created. Then using this drawing surface, I'm going to go ahead and call that function that we're using to draw to the surface of our drawing surface. Now the size can be whatever you would like. I'm going to set it to 10 for this example, since this is a pretty good value in my opinion to start out with. Then for the location, we're also going to get our out hit again from our line trace by channel. And if we type in UV, we should find an option here that says find collision UV. Now in this find collision UV, we'll get a UV output and this UV output is what's going to be fed into the location. So that way we know exactly where we're drawing on the surface. And that's it. Assuming everything was set up correctly, you should now be able to draw on this drawing surface blueprint that we created, and you should be able to draw whatever it is you would like, whether players want to draw a smiley face or a star, or maybe they want to start stamping random faces or pictures or whatever they would like onto that surface. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.